she was in school when we started dating. She was in her third year when she accepted my proposal. I was working on living my own life. The idea of the relationship for me was to wait for her to complete school so we could get married. I told her about it and she said, I can't wait to get out of here and become your wife. Her only concern was work, so she asked questions about it. Does that mean you wouldn't wait for me to get a job before we got married? I told her, how long does it take to get a job? If a job search comes in the way, I would prefer we get married while you're in the market looking for a job. My house became her house when she was in school. At first, she used to come around on weekends, then she changed. She was coming around whenever she felt like coming around. Later, it was every day. She could stay with me all week and go to campus from my place. It didn't bother me. I wanted her to get good grades. So as far as she was learning, I didn't have a problem. One day, she told me, I have told my parents about paying my school fees for next semester, but they are delaying. They will send it. But I understand my parents are facing hard times. If you could give me the money, I will refund it once they send me the fees. A day later, I gave her the amount in full. She hugged me and said, If I didn't have a man like you, where would I be? Thanks a lot. Once they send the money, you will have it. Maybe it was the happiness on her face or the way she showed appreciation that affected my heart. And I said, You don't have to pay it back. When the school fees comes, you can use it for other things. Students always have other things they can do with money. As the saying goes, you don't do a good thing for a woman once and stop. You do it once and you will live to do it again at some point. That was how I started paying her school fees. I paid for her last apartment fees, school fees and other fees that came along with it. She didn't plead for it. She just asked as if my responsibility was to pay her school fees. I didn't shake my head. I paid whatever bill she brought from school until the day she completed. She was a good girl. Whenever she was with me, I lacked nothing. She would cook and serve. She would clean and do laundry. There is always a difference in my life whenever she's around. It was during her graduation day that I met her parents for the first time. After the event, she held my hands and walked me to her parents. She said, Dad, this is Matt, the guy I was telling you about. Her dad's face immediately lit up with smiles. He said, Oh, so you're the guy who's been doing miracles in my daughter's life. I was wondering why you haven't come visit us. Good to meet you. And let me use this opportunity to thank you for all you have done for my daughter. She speaks so well of you. Her mother shook my hand and said, This one is a keeper. Come home when you're ready. We are family already. That day, my status as a legitimate boyfriend was confirmed by her parents. She never mentioned it to me that she has been telling her parents about me. After that day, I felt it was my time to also introduce her to my parents. It was Christmas Day when I took her home. My siblings were home for Christmas, so it was a big family gathering. I chose the right time to introduce her to them, and they were all pleased to meet her. There is something about Kate that makes you fall in love with her the very first day you meet her. She's very socialized, so immediately you introduce her to a new group. She mingles with them as though she's been a member of the group from day one. She hit it running with my siblings, especially our youngest. She was all over the place in the house, making everyone her ally. I was in the corner, looking at her, and counting myself lucky to have her in my life. We spent three days, and by the time we were leaving, everyone was asking her, When are you coming around again? Marriage was the next step for me. So after her graduation, I asked her, So what's next? How long do you have to look for a job? She answered, I don't know how long it takes to have a job, but don't you think it would be better for me to start doing my master's as I wait for a job opportunity? Maybe being a master's candidate can also speed up my job search. It's only two years. I answered, If that's what makes you happy, babe, go ahead with it. Her fees were on me, but I didn't shiver. A well-educated wife makes a proud husband, so I was there for her. When I heard of a job opening that I thought would fit her, I sent her resume. At some point, she stopped looking for a job and concentrated on her masters, but I didn't stop searching. During the last year of her program, she got busier. 
I could see in her actions and how she was withdrawing from me. Our conversation become dull and one-sided. When she called and we talked, it was always about how busy she had become and how her program was stressing her. She didn't come around like she used to. I was the one going to visit her often. I understand the dictates of the times, so I didn't complain. She had only six months on her program when I got a job for her. She told me, this is the wrong time for me to start working, looking at how busy everything is around me. I don't think I will do my best if I take on the role. I was stunned. I said, Kate, you can't be serious. Who would say no to this? This is a once in a lifetime opportunity you don't want to throw away. It became an argument that turned into a fight. We had had a series of fights before, but that fight was different. We both got to the end of our emotions and said words we shouldn't have said to each other. She screamed, why are you forcing what I don't want to do on me? Who even told you that I would like to work in such an institution? I'm not in a hurry, but if you're doing this because of marriage, then sorry to tell you, I'm not ready. I felt insulted. I was working for her good, but she felt I was doing it to marry her. I screamed at her. You think of yourself so special to think I was doing this because I want to marry you. I would do it for a total stranger. I would even do it for my enemy because I think this is a life changing opportunity. She didn't go for the job. We didn't talk for days. I was giving her time to realize her mistake and to say sorry to me. But that sorry never came. She was writing her last exams when I sent her, good luck, go and make me proud. She didn't respond. One day, my younger sister called me. She asked me, what is happening between you and Kate? I asked myself, how did she know that something was wrong? She told me, I was chatting with Kate when I asked her about you. And she said, you are no longer together. You broke up a month ago. I laughed. The kind of laughter that comes out when you are angry. I asked her, did she tell you that? When? My sister sent me a screenshot of their chat. That very day I went to her house. Her mother was there. I narrated everything to her. And she said, Kate, are you crazy? How many men will go this length to help their woman? Are you out of your mind? I asked her, why did you tell my sister that it was over? She answered, you spoke to my mom when you came here, so go to my mom and ask her that question. I took it as something that we could resolve, but not knowing that she was serious about leaving me. The whole thing felt like a bad joke coming from a comedian who has never succeeded in making an audience laugh. It got to a point I was going to her house every day to get an answer. Her father took it upon himself to resolve the issue for us, but each day when I went to see her, her answer was the same. Her father called me on the side and told me, Relax, women are like that. They love the drama side of things. Hold back for a while and let's see what happens. It wasn't about me. It was about the man she met while doing her program. Maybe the man had more than I had. Maybe it was because he was wealthy and travels around for business. Maybe he promised her more than I could ever promise her. Maybe she fell for the man and was looking for an excuse to leave me and I gave her one when the job issue came up. Immediately, I knew another man is in the picture. I sighed heavily and said, I won't fight again. If after everything I have done for her, she would choose another man over me, then she's not worth it. Her parents were the ones fighting my fight for me, especially her father. He told me, if it's not you, she can't bring another man here to see us. I told him, dad, it's okay, it happens. Allow her to choose her own happiness. What I did shouldn't stop her from going after what makes her happy. It hurts, but it doesn't last forever. I'll be fine. Seven clear months later, she's here with an apology she should have given me seven months ago. I asked her three questions. What happened? Why are you here? What happened to the man that promised you a better life? She said, I have realized my mistake. It wasn't about any man. He was just a friend who came through when we were having a difficult time. I am on my knees. Please let this go away. I beg you in God's name. I closed my door and wished her a happy life. My mom has called me asking me to forgive her. My dad has called. He said, when a woman goes to that length and comes back, 
She learns to be respectful. Take her back and she will worship you. Her mom has called too. As for her dad, I called to tell him what was going on. He was aware, but he decided not to get involved. He said, I'm on your side on this one. Whatever you decide on, I will support you. But make sure you choose what will make you happy. I don't have any desire for her again. I was licking my wounds and counting my loss. But my heart was in a good place. I don't think I can love her the way I used to. But she keeps coming back every day with an apology. Now she have reached out to some of my friends to join their voice to apologize on her behalf. I will never take her back. What I haven't told anyone was that I have already been seeing another girl. I have learned my lesson. This one is more mentally mature and already have a job and I don't have to spend money on her. First of all, before we make a decision on this one, allow me to go back to the original reason why they broke up in the first place. One, she broke up with him without having the decency of telling him that the relationship was over. He had to find out from his younger sister. This shows that she lacks respect for him. So if we excuse her reason for breaking up was the pressure she felt from her school, it further proved that she's not wife material because when the going gets tough, because when the goings get tough, she runs into another man's arm. Number two, she started losing attraction for him when he became the provider, giving assistance without accountability. Never give out your resource without accountability. She saw him as an ATM machine when he gave her his resources without accountability, encouraging her to feel an inflated self-worth. He made her feel like she's worth more than her intrinsic market value. But the street gave her a reality check and she came running back after seven months. He didn't let her know that she had to work for his affection. He gave her his resource without giving her conditions, which caused her to feel entitled to his resource. She felt like their relationship was transactional and he was paying her to get married to him. They are not married yet and he should have allowed her parents to continue to take on her financial responsibility. Yet, he took it upon himself to do it, hence making her feel a distorted view of her self-worth. As a result, she went with another man with more resources, only to find out that she is not worth what she thought she was. Number 3. He inadvertently trained her to see him as an ATM machine. The genuine attraction was lost the moment he started dishing out money without accountability. The relationship dynamic is likened to a prostitute and her trick. I will conclude by saying that he should never take her back. Who knows how many guys she have slept with to convince herself that she's not worth what she thought she's worth. She's not loyal, she cannot be depended on, and she cannot be trusted. Without trust, there's no relationship. Is he a simp? Yes, he is a simp. Don't let anybody feel like they are entitled to your resources. Just because she is a woman, he artificially inflated her value. She went out to the street and got a reality check. Now she came running back. Although he made a simp mistake, I'm glad he learned his lesson and moved on.